Patrick, you have a story you wanted to talk about concerning a superstar of EF Education Easy Post. Oh yeah, there there have been some some rufflings about Carapaz's performance so far this year since joining EF, and I saw a report somewhere. I can't remember where it was, but. And and it was also through Google Translate, so let's all just bear this in mind. But basically, Carapaz hasn't been adapting particularly well to EF's, um, I don't know, culinary <laughs> expertise. I don't know. Basically, Carapaz is, I think, a little bit above what they're hoping in terms of like weight at the moment by like a, a smidgen. But they are a little bit concerned ahead of the Tour de France that he isn't going to be competitive which is a big concern for ef when you consider that they invested quite a lot of money into into carapaz and i remember seeing somewhere that vogt has had to go to ef to try and get them to give more money to get carapaz so obviously vogt is probably feeling the heat as well as somebody who was really pushing this decision to get carapaz in the team and now it's not looking so great for them then again we are still over a month away from a tour and things can very much change in a month but what do you guys think about carapaz for the tour knowing this information would you are you concerned about his ability to finish on the podium for, for the tour we we've talked him up so many times that he's one of the most consistent grand tour riders in recent times outside of the slovenians well outside of tad Bogatia, not roglic because he's plenty of dnfs so yeah it's a bit of a shame and i mean the whole weight thing as well jan ulrich was one who was uh, known for always gaining a lot of weight during the winter and the Tour de Suisse I think there was a Tour de Suisse where he crashed and that was the reason why he missed the 1999 Tour de France because he was only living off gels when he was training and racing nothing else no food no anything and then then crashed and hence why he's the winner of the 1999 Welter's Banyan wasn't at the Tour de France but that's a complete mm. sidetrack but yeah I mean like you said the amount of money they've invested into getting Carapaz here, and then uh, if he's not yeah. hindi- hindi- hitting the right performance numbers, let's call it, they're yeah. going to be quite worried about this because, yeah. And he's also had a, a some kind of respiratory illness to last few weeks, which is why when you've looked on PCS, for example, and he's been on for a Liège or a La Flesh Wallonne or a Amstel, his name's been on there, but he hasn't been at the start list is because he, he is, I think, a little bit ill at the moment, which again is not ideal preparation for the tour especially when you consider that you know i know we're going into may so we're kind of he'll, he'll get through may and then we'll get towards the warm-up races where he's going to the dauphine i think he's going there so i think there's still plenty of time for carapaz and ef to kind of swing this around but it's very interesting that moving from ineos to ef hasn't been the slick transition that perhaps they were expecting and it just shows kind of behind the scenes how difficult it can be for a rider, you don't really consider a rider going to a new team and they just kind of fit in and it's just perfect. You don't think about all the other extra things that go on behind the scenes that make kind of a transition a bit more difficult for a rider. Yeah, that, that, that's true. I don't think we're going to see like a big fad uh, weight loss thing for Carapaz. I don't think any nutritionist would approve what, what Ulrich did 20 years ago. I just don't think that's, it's not sustainable. It's not healthy. I don't think we're going to see that from Carapaz this year. Who knows where he'll be? Weight isn't everything, of course. We'll wait and see. Maybe it's about his fueling and so forth. And we'll see that come into fruition over the next couple of months. I, I know these guys are so sort of fixated on their way. And maybe it's also weighing on his mental health as well, knowing that he needs to be in a certain position to fight for certain races. So I don't know. It's it, it's an interesting debate and it would explain a little bit why he's been off the mark. But I think the respiratory issues as well also explain a lot we've seen riders who aren't on their weight target and um, still perform so i think there might be something else really which would be this respiratory problem that could be holding him back i mean the weight loss thing remember george bennett a few years ago in the in the giro d'italia that went completely crazy and he just couldn't perform and there was another thing remember it's like when christoph was still at uae I think it was like during the tour or something he put on loads of kilos because they were giving him um creatine which increases your water retention. So he actually got to the end of the tour and he was like four or five kilos, something heavier. I'm not sure if that's not like an exact, like it was four or five. I think it was, it might have even been more than that. But basically it just shows how the whole nutrition side of cycling is becoming increasingly more prevalent. And I think it was something which was perhaps neglected a bit, let's say in the the 80s through to the 2000s. But I think it's certainly been the, 
the front, like the, the new frontier in terms of kind of marginal gains, especially over like the last 10 years or so. Literally Yumbo Visma using AI to generate meal plans and dietary things for their riders. Yeah, so... Th- really? I, wow. I believe it's it's got something to do with, at, with the actual Yumbo supermarket, but the technology they've used is something AI generated to maximize like nu- nutrients and calories and so forth for their riders. So Yumbo Visma have been working with AI t- to like help develop uh, meal plans and nutritional data for their riders. Maybe that's mm. the future. More to come on AI and Yumbo Visma. Yeah. But you would say they probably they're, they're going to sort something out. I know EF do a lot with their sort of new frontier tech stuff, but I, I imagine, I mean, like Super Sapiens and Wahoo and all this kind of stuff. For instance, but I imagine Ineos Grenadiers would have been quite similar. Maybe not Mother Star before, but yeah. yeah. I mean, we'll find out, I guess. Yeah, it certainly is a bit of a strange one. And yeah, going from Ineos Grenadiers to EF Education, don't really know the structures, etc., within the teams and how important nutrition is. 